This episode of Tech News Day is sponsored by Factor and by the Beard Club. All right, let's start things off with yet another update. Hopefully the final update before the truly final update about Elon Musk and Twitter and their will they, won't they, they will, they won't. On again, they off will, again. They won't. Yes. Courtship that's taken place over most of the past year. And it looks like it's definitely happening with Elon scheduled to get the keys to his new company by Friday. Mm-hmm. And while he has publicly complained, even after changing his mind for the second time, that he is overpaying by a lot his attitude towards this godforsaken deal that has haunted all of us seems to be quite positive. So positive, in fact, that he used a visit to Twitter HQ on Wednesday to try out some of his comedy material. On an audience that literally has to be there and might get fired in the very near future. Most likely will. It was the best response I've ever got, oddly enough. Yes. Mm. A captive audience. Yes. Here's a video that Elon tweeted with the caption, Entering Twitter HQ, let that sink in. And then there's Elon entering Twitter headquarters carrying a sink. Uh, get it? Let the, let that sink in. Um, because he's holding it and it's, uh, you know, well, that's the joke. He, that's, he wants you to let, let the sink in. It doesn't get any deeper than that, actually. I mean, we've made fun of Elon for seeking out friendships with comedians like Nathan Fielder and trying and failing to make them laugh. But it looks like some comedy, some, has rubbed off on the world's richest man. Yeah. He's, I, I can't... Uh, can't deny it. The man did a funny. Yeah. Maybe he'll uh, he'll purchase Comedy Central next. The and... failing Comedy Central. Yeah. Uh, just steal it away from Paramount. Clearly, they don't know what they're doing. And then show them how it's done. Yeah. Yeah. Elon Musk is the, the daily show with Elon it's, Musk. It's time that Comedy Central was owned by someone who actually understands comedy. Yeah. The daily show with Elon Musk. Because no, Tre- we're Trevor Noah is leaving. Show. We're bringing the Babylon Bee. It's, it's the, day, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the Babylon Bee nightly comedy hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyways, uh, that post was followed up by meeting a lot of cool people at Twitter today, which is a level of excitement that almost certainly wasn't reciprocated by the cool people over at Twitter.com, 75% of whom Elon has publicly said he will fire once he's in charge. Yeah, um, got to be awkward as hell. Oh, cool. It's happening. Uh, I'm just going to start. I'm just going to hop on LinkedIn now rather yeah. than later. Well, the problem is, is like uh, Elon's peppering in the jokes. So you don't know what he's joking about. Is he joking about the firings or is he joking about the sink? Yeah. Who's to say the man's playing like 7D chess, maybe even 8D chess. It, I would lo- like not that I would love to see it, but I, I am fascinated by the reactions because they are so reliant on the people's emotional state at this company. Like, someone who's worried about their job might ask, oh, Elon, I'm sorry, was there a broken sink upstairs? They might not even understand that he's trying to do a joke. Yeah, that uh, yeah, could be that. Could and someone it could take a simple uh, wave of the hand or a hello from Elon as a joke and, and over laugh at it because they're trying to solidify their careers. No, I wasn't waving at you. I was waving you away. You're fired. Yes. Got to go. Uh, yeah, so Elon, he also changed his Twitter bio to Chief Twit and his location to Twitter HQ. So, yeah, looks like, per the instructions of Delaware Chancery Court Judge Kathleen McCormick, this $44 billion deal will be finalized by Friday or else. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that, that does not mean that this saga will be over Friday because Elon's got a whole lot of ideas about how to run a social media company despite never having done anything like that before. Mm-hmm. And over the next few weeks and months, we will get to see how that's going to work out. And I am, I'm truly curious what comes next. Tell someone who is not handy with tools or repairing cars to, you know, here's a, here's a car, make it go faster. And they'll be like, well, I got a lot of ideas about how it could, but, uh, you know, hopefully we're going to figure that out. All right, I'm going to dive right in. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I love video games. I love reviewing video games. I'm going to start my own video game studio. Yeah. How hard could making video games be? Mm-hmm. People watch my funny videos about me playing video games. Yeah. Have for years. So um, I'm going to make the best video game studio of all time. Yeah. And anyone who says that I'm in over my head, well, they're just haters. Hating. They're haters. Haters. Uh, yeah. No, this is... Uh, buckle up. It's going to be... The, like, Interesting. I, I guarantee you, the first week, maybe the first day, people are going to test the waters. Oh, yeah. And test them hard. Uh-huh. And uh, they're probably going to get away with it. It's going to be uh, very interesting. Nazi shit is back. I also think it's like, you know, 
he might lose interest in it over the next couple of months. But like, yeah, he's going to be, you're going to see Elon at his most involved very soon. He's going to have to be. Yeah. Like, I mean, also, this, they, is a really, day, this is a day-to-day job. It does put him in the crosshairs of like serious federal regulation, though. So, um, you know, careful. We'll see. We'll yeah. cross that bridge when we come to it. Experience may not be all that important in social media business, though, so who knows? Uh, For example, just because someone got into the social media business 18 years ago and still controls a majority stake of the U.S. social media market share, that doesn't mean they can't eventually blow it all on a wildly unpopular idea. We're, of course, talking about Mark Zuckerberg, who, after years of running Facebook and Instagram, decided to pivot his entire business into the metaverse. Are you excited yet? Yay. Meta's Horizon Worlds barely even resembles the so-called metaverse that Meta is pitching, and what it actually is is something that already exists and has been done more successfully by other people for a lot less money. Horizon Worlds currently gets fewer concurrent users than Second Life, a metaverse platform that's been around longer than even Facebook. It's been around a long time. Yeah, so uh, so far we're just repeating stuff we've talked about previously. Yeah. But here's some news. Some new news. It's not just us. It's not just Meta's own employees who think this is all a catastrophic mistake. Meta's shareholders aren't too hot on this metaverse business either, turns Mm. out. Uh, After announcing on Wednesday that their quarterly profits had fallen by 50% compared to a year ago, Meta's stock price fell nearly 20% in aftermarket trading. Uh, It's been almost exactly a year since Mark Zuckerberg unveiled his company's bold new plans. And since then, Meta's stock has fallen 68%. Wow. Uh, At least some of that is due to larger market trends. And it's it's, uh, still not as bad as what's happened to Netflix's stock over roughly the same period. But unlike Netflix, Meta's stock is even down 40% from where it was five years ago. This is a... Yeah, uh, it's starting in in very early stages. It's a big uh, dip. It's going to take a while to recover those gains. Average down. It's hard to even say that, like, you know general market downturn. I mean, it it is true, but uh, companies like Facebook and Netflix guide the uh, the other parts of the market. At least they so, did like, they, for a yeah, while. Well, but what I'm saying is There's like... There's a while where it was, like, uh, it was all about fang stocks. Like, Well, yeah, and then <laughs> Netflix fell out and they're like, well, we can't do anything with this anagram. Yeah. Uh, get rid of the whole thing. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, the uh, the meta thing is, is it's bad for... Industry wide, tech sector, and everything else. Mm. So, it, no, it, I mean, it, it it does have an effect. It is great. I think it's great that it's failing, and uh, it's not uh, causing everything else. But it definitely is a signifier for a lot of people. It's certainly dragging down the Nasdaq, <laughs> yeah, and sure. the S and P, mm-hmm. and the Dow. It's dragging it all down. There you go. So yeah, seems bad. Uh, here's the New York Times with more on this. A year ago, Mark Zuckerberg changed Facebook's name to Meta and said he was going all in on the immersive digital world of the so-called metaverse. Since then, Meta has plowed billions of dollars into and restructured itself around the emerging technology, just as the global economy has slowed, inflation has soared, and investors have begun paying more attention to costs. The combination has been nothing short of disastrous. This year, Meta's earnings have been hit hard by its spending on the metaverse and its slowing growth in social networking and digital advertising. In July, the Silicon Valley company posted its first sales decline as a public company. Its stock has plunged more than 60% this year. On Wednesday, Meta continued that trajectory and indicated that the decline would not end anytime soon. It said it would be, quote, making significant changes across the board to operate more efficiently, including by shrinking some teams and by hiring only in its areas of highest priority. So, sorry, 75% of Twitter. Um, Maybe going down the the street, dropping your resume off at... Facebook, maybe not the best plan. Oh, no, I love the metaverse. I, 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 I think it's the best I idea do anything ever. for the metaverse. That's, yeah, yeah. You, this is adoption by force. I, yeah, and it's funny. Both. Oh, Facebook, you want jobs? Both Facebook and Twitter. Like, I, I feel like both companies, they're going to be slimmed down to just the yes men. The, well, yeah, the, they're, both these companies are going into Hitler's bunker, and uh, it's going to get dark. It, it couldn't have happened. I mean, Zuckerberg is already... You know, that was that was bound to happen if there was a big economic downturn. It just is so unfortunate for the average user that of all times, Elon Musk had to take over right now when it's like. In a lot of ways, he he's just following the market trends by axing the entire workforce. But yeah. yes, it's 
It should be clear to anyone that specifically Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk are going to attract these type of yes men, and they're going to be the ones that they want to keep around. Yeah. And it's probably not going to be great for the user experience. But it's going to be great for the news. Our job. Uh, very good insurance policy for us. Yes. All there's, things considered. There's, all, there's no such thing as, as bad news yes. when, you're, when you're in the news business. <laughs> Until the world's gone. That's right. Uh-huh. Now, a big chunk of those losses is no surprise. It's due directly to Meta's metaverse ambitions with Reality Labs, Meta's VR division, losing $3.7 billion in the past quarter. Mm. But the Zuck clearly still sees this as an investment in the future that will pay dividends down the road. Saying on this earnings call, there's still a long road ahead to build the next computing platform, but we're clearly doing leading work here. This is a massive undertaking, and it's going to take a few versions of each product before they become mainstream. But I think that our work here is going to be of historic importance and create the foundation for an entirely new way that we will interact with each other and blend technology into our lives, as well as the foundation for the long term of our business. Again, I like that he's wasting his money on this, like his company's money, because I, I, I think the tech is cool. I don't want him anywhere near it. But yeah, he genuinely believes that he is. This is a paradigm shift. This is he is Thomas Edison with the light bulb. <laughs> he is Henry Ford with the automobile. It would be less Mark Zuckerberg in the metaverse. Less cringy if what his company had produced wasn't so terrible. Yeah. And he in the earnings call, he emphasized repeatedly. He's like, well, you know, we're kind of iterating in public like uh Everyone, they're basically just using a beta out there. This is it's obviously going to look amazing. Well, guess what? Here. You didn't fucking put that out front, so the optics are fucked, you idiot. Yeah. Like, yeah. what? Okay. You're talking about the American public. They're fucking dumb. They see that, they're like, that's all we're ever getting. Yeah. That's it. First, first glance, that looks it, like it, shit. It, they did not leave a good first impression. No, they certainly did not. I also love that he's like, it's going to pay dividends. And like everyone's like, whoa, dividends? Facebook stock dividends? No, no, no. I was talking about no, investing. We're a tech some... stock. We don't pay dividends ever. <laughs> we're not a real company. Get yeah. the fuck out of here. Anyways, I guess the time, uh, time will tell whether those just insane ambitions will pan out. But for now, Meta is in the most dire place that it has been in years. Feels good. Uh, in similar situations, you might see shareholders vote to, mm, I don't know, replace the CEO, a little no confidence. Yeah. Uh, but apparently Zuckerberg owns so many voting shares that it's literally impossible. Uh, he is literally the Joker standing in front of a pile of Facebook shares, yeah. sending a message. Yeah, it's not about the money. It's about getting everyone hooked on the metaverse. Yes. So Meta is in a tough spot regardless of who their CEO is. Apple limited the amount of spying that they're able to do on users, which made a ton of revenue vanish overnight. So desperate measures were necessary to preserve infinite growth. But there's one desperate measure that Meta is apparently trying out that is uh, sure to be a, cr a crowd pleaser, especially for millennials around our age. We pay taxes. Uh-huh. We have disposable income. Here's Mashable. The 2000s are back, folks. Instagram is reportedly internally working on a feature that allows users to add a song to their profiles. No! <laughs> Developer and notable leaker Alessandro Paluzzi tweeted screenshots of the feature, which he states Instagram is currently trialing. In a comment emailed to Mashable, a spokesperson said the feature was an internal prototype and it's not being tested externally. Per Paluzzi, the feature would appear in your Instagram profile at the very bottom of your bio underneath the links section. The developer demonstrated how this would work by adding Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up to his profile, which, let's face it, might indicate the likelihood of this feature actually being rolled out. Does this feature sound familiar? Well, it's just like a MySpace feature from the mid-2000s. Back when the social network was at the height of its popularity between 2005 and 2008, users could add songs to their MySpace profile. For anyone who was a teen or a 20-something in the 2000s, you'll likely remember that this feature was kind of a big deal. Having the ability to publicly express yourself through the medium of a song choice felt completely newfangled at the time. It was. It really was. It was newfangled. Also, it was extremely annoying. We're bringing that shit back. Yeah. Like, the, the old internet, was, it, things were developed and molded in a way because we got rid of terrible things like uh, just... We did away with this like five years ago where everyone was like, all right, it's done. We're going to stop auto-playing music and all kinds of shit. We're bringing that shit back. Yeah, could you, like... I'm gonna go check their profile. Crawling in my skin! Hell this, yeah. This would be Hell a, yeah. a pointless feature anyway, because no one has, like, audio on their phones, typically, 
Uh, what? You don't, you have audio on your phone just all the time? I don't know what you mean. You just play music on I your have... tone, on your phone and everything? What? My phone has speakers. Yeah, but do you use it all, constantly? If it, if there's audio in what, I, in what I'm looking at, then yes. Hmm. I don't know what you mean. I, have to ha- I put headphones in. Oh, well, I'm sure it would autoplay in your headphones too. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'm just saying, like, on Instagram, I don't, I'm not currently, like, I never watch with audio anything. Oh, when you're, like, scrolling? Yeah. Yeah, no. Or, like, the Absolutely stories. Because I mainly use it for stories to just see my friends' posts. Like, and oh. I've, I've never heard anything. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm talking specifically for social media. Right. Yeah, no. I Occasionally, I'll unmute my Twitter timeline, and it, it's very annoying. Instantly annoying. Yeah, I have to turn that. Well, because most of the audio stuff that's on there is ads. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, Reddit too. Oh, shut up. It, so, so you understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying like showing a YouTube. I'm video. I'm saying we're bringing that shit back. Yeah. Now, when you click on their profile, you get to hear, uh, you know, the the new Panic at the Disco track. Because I'm all about that scene. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all Anyways. about that scene. I'm gonna get my bangs trimmed. I'm gonna they start. Should- Start taking my selfies from a high angle again. They should uh, rub a little Vaseline on the lens, get the proper effect. Kids today will never know the social, uh, the friend group pressure of having a top eight. I think they should bring it to Instagram. Yeah. So that it starts one. wars within uh, Generation Z friend groups. I think these are all great ideas. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, hopefully they uh, implement this. Uh, I'm not going to use it. I don't know if anyone will, but uh, the kids seem to like music still, so... It's been so long that this is a novel feature for the youth that Instagram is desperately trying to hold on to. Mm-hmm. They were they were babies when we had MySpace autoplay music. They've lived their whole lives without even knowing that this is a possibility. To them, yeah. it's new. Yeah. They don't even know our dead language, HTML. Yeah. I mean, there's another fresh idea. Let it- Instagram users alter the HTML and CSS code of their profiles. It's fun and you learn while you're doing it. Yeah. So instead of the same boring, sterile layout on every single Instagram profile, why not let the users decide on the, the colors, the fonts, and the amount of shitty animated GIFs that are scattered throughout their profile? Yeah. Leave that up to the user. And and what about, uh, yeah, instead of just showing the number of accounts that someone is following, oh, it's just a number, boring. Uh, what about uh, you let the users display their personal favorite accounts in its own little section of the profile. I mean, you'd obviously, you'd have to limit the number of accounts that they can display. It couldn't be like 100. So maybe, maybe eight. Cap it at eight. A nice round number. You could call it the, the top eight. Yeah. Instead of your photo grid, it's just photos of your friends. The, These your, are my cool your friends. Your top eight friends. Yes. So there you go, Mark. Uh, these ideas, they are all free. I hope you think about it. Um, Everyone gets a free animated under construction GIF. To put yeah. on their profile page till they're done editing all the HTML. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And a counter so you can yeah, see how, how many, many people visitors? Are... Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, there are no good new ideas. You know that more than most, Mark. Uh, so we ah. it's all about recycling old ideas. I do. I love giving Mark Zuckerberg bad ideas because uh, he, he apparently follows our ideas because back when they debuted the original what the horizons looked like and they like like here's the eiffel tower and mark is is welcome enjoy and we made fun of it we're like you don't even have to show the real thing you can just show a mock-up and then just yeah, say so you're that's working what they on started it. doing and then they did that and we were like you idiots it looks stupid too and you're lying yeah those legs aren't even real so i those mean cgi legs we asked for it and they did it and we still made fun of them so we'll never be happy i guess well it's news and you know I'm not here to solve the problems. I'm here to make fun of them. I'm here to just enjoy the news. Yeah. And we do have more news coming up. But first, we got to tell you about uh, some of our favorite food, Factor. Yum. Fall is officially here. And with a new season comes a new routine. But if you're like us, you get sick of the same old, same old day after day. Luckily, Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery makes it easy to switch things up with 30-plus meal uh, choices per week, 36-plus weekly add-ons, and an option to add protein to select vegan and veggie meals each week. Whether I'm out and about all day or just cozying up at home, Factor's fresh, never frozen meals make it easy to fuel up fast with meals delivered ready to heat and eat in just two minutes. Savor the harvest season with Factor's Pumpkin Feast for Two, featuring fall's most craved flavor, pumpkin. (laughs) This ready-to-eat bundle helps you make the most of autumn with a full spread that feeds two. Date night, anyone? Factor's rotating menu has tons of fall options every week, too, and seasonal favorites like three-bean vegan chili. 
the apple mustard pork chop and Tuscan tomato chicken into your rotation to spice things up. Factor now offers 30 plus meals per week and 36 plus add-on options like smoothies, juices, snacks, and more to keep me going no matter what's on the schedule. I like getting their smoothies. They're delicious. Take them on the go. And they fill you up pretty well they, for a nice midday snack. They certainly do. So Factor is is cheaper than takeout, first of all, seriously. And thanks to their commitment uh, to ingredients with integrity, you can actually feel good about what you're eating every day. Factor has endless options, however you like to eat. Choose from keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and protein plus to get chef-crafted, dietitian approved recipes that you'll look forward to every time. Not only do Factor Meals save me time, but they also keep me satisfied. Their chef-crafted recipes are packed with restaurant-quality flavor. It's so good, I almost can't believe it's dietitian approved Head to go.factor75.com slash Newsday60 and use code Newsday60 to get 60% off your first box. That is code Newsday60 at go.factor75.com slash Newsday60 to get 60% off your first box. This episode is also sponsored by The Beard Club. Having a great looking beard, it requires work. I wouldn't know, but I hear it from this guy all the time. It ain't easy. Yeah. Uh, so whether it's, uh, you know, beard growth oils, styling products, or a top of the line trimmer, there's a small army of products required to grow your best beard. Luckily, Beard Club is here to help. As a leader in beard first men's growth and grooming, Beard Club delivers quality hardware and consumables that'll help you get a better, thicker, and fuller looking beard. Head to beardclub.com slash today daily, take the beard quiz, and use our code today daily at checkout. They'll recommend the best beard kit that's tailored to fit your needs. So I went with one of their trimmer kits and it came with everything I need to maintain a well-groomed beard. You got beard oil and beard balm for styling, beard shampoo for staying clean without damaging the hair, a moisturizing cream that I really appreciate because my beard dries out very easily, a great beard brush for getting these products where they need to go and keeping the scruff under control, and most importantly, a cordless electric trimmer that is honestly the best trimmer that I've ever owned. Uh, no hair pulling, all the length attachments that you'll need, and a battery life that's so good I still haven't had to charge it after almost three months. Well, I'm jealous. I think I'd look pretty cool with it. Now I'd look like Eminem. You know, they sell uh, vitamins to spray on your face to stimulate beard growth. It's we'll see if it know. works. Beard Club, <laughs> send me some chemicals. Uh, if you're just getting started with growing a beard like me, or you're 15 and normal, yeah. uh, Beard Club's growth kits have everything that you need to grow a beard faster, thicker, and healthier than you'd ever be able to on your own. No matter what type of beard you have, Beard Club has the perfect kit to fit your needs. Beard Club, over 2 million beards served. Grow your best beard today and take 20% off your first order when you go to beardclub.com slash today daily and use code today daily. That is beardclub.com slash today daily. Code today daily for 20% off your first order. All right, back to the news now. Um, and if there's any modern day equivalent to MySpace and its massive popularity with teenagers, it would probably be TikTok. And TikTok is very controversial for several reasons. One of the biggest being that it's owned by a Chinese company and therefore technically owned by the Chinese government who has been accused of using apps like TikTok to spy on users around the world. If true, that's a pretty serious national security issue, and it lines up with tactics that the Chinese government has allegedly used for years to keep tabs on dissidents and critics and try to blackmail people into spying for them. This issue hasn't gotten a ton of press since former President Trump tried and failed to ban TikTok in the U.S., but a recent report from Forbes has reignited the issue. Uh, here's some of their reporting. A China-based team at TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, planned to use the TikTok app to monitor the personal location of some specific American citizens, according to materials reviewed by Forbes. The team behind the monitoring project, ByteDance's internal audit and risk control department, is led by Beijing-based executive Song Ye, who reports to ByteDance co-founder and CEO Rubo Liang. The team primarily conducts investigations into potential misconduct by current and former ByteDance employees. But in at least two cases, the internal audit team also planned to collect TikTok data about the location of a U.S. citizen who had never had an employment relationship with the company, the materials show. It is unclear from the materials whether data about these Americans was actually collected. However, the plan was for a Beijing-based ByteDance team to obtain location data from U.S. users' devices. And this is like the fourth story in as many months of just like, I, I deleted my account at the beginning of summer. I was There was like some article where I was just like, why do I need this app anyway? I'm seeing the best stuff on other uh, places. I'm gonna get rid of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've I've managed to enjoy the best of TikTok without ever downloading the TikTok to that TikTok app onto my phone. Well, now um, that I'm back on on Twitter more on the company account, it's like 
I really do see the best of TikTok there. And it's like, if I'm going to get my content, I'm going to get it from an American company, warts and all. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Anyway, the article continues. TikTok spokesperson Maureen Shanahan said that TikTok collects approximate location information based on users' IP addresses to, among other things, help show relevant content and ads to users, comply with applicable laws, and detect and prevent fraud and inauthentic behavior. But the material reviewed by Forbes indicates that ByteDance's internal audit team was planning to use this location information to surveil individual American citizens, not to target ads or any of these other purposes. Forbes is not disclosing the nature and purpose of the planned surveillance referenced in the materials in order to protect sources. TikTok and ByteDance did not answer questions about whether internal audit has specifically targeted any members of the U.S. government, activists, public figures, or journalists. You would assume those would be high on the list if you were going to do a little spying and tracking. Like, I mean, who else? Yeah. Uh, no, we're tracking Joe the Plumber. Yeah. Seeing what he's been up to. We're very interested in your American plumbing techniques. Yeah. We found all of the actual American straw men. We're following them. Yeah. So, anyways, the article points out that this kind of thing wouldn't be all that different from stuff that both Uber and Facebook have been caught doing. Just minus the whole national security aspect. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. If you're gonna... Give your data away. Give it away to an American company. Yeah, sell it for the almighty dollar. Exactly. Hey, don't use it to commit espionage. Come on. Mm -hmm. Uber at one point identified the devices of politicians and regulators and served them a different version of the app to avoid scrutiny. Diabolical. Scrutiny. Uh, and, And Uber and Facebook both tracked the locations of journalists reporting on them. But this TikTok news comes at a time when they're finalizing a deal with the U.S. government to ensure that U.S. TikTok user data is fully walled off from ByteDance's servers. So maybe they're just getting in some last-minute snooping before then. Yeah, they're just you know, like, once, once we sign the deal, uh, then no no more allowed. But yeah. for now, I mean... Yeah, they're they're in that window of uh, everything is legal. Yeah. They're like, so you're saying that, uh, you know, <laughs> until the time that we sign, we can kind of get away with whatever yeah, we want, right? That might be it. The implication is that we're already doing it, so we might as well... Yeah. Yeah. So, may, yeah. Maybe that's the case. Or if you ask ByteDance, this is all just bullshit and Forbes is doing a smear job on them. But, of course, that would be the response as well. Yeah, yeah that's, of course they're going to deny it. Um, yeah. And their denial is, like, kind of weird. There's, like, uh, people have analyzed it and they're like, we don't track GPS. And like, well, the article never said you did. <laughs> yeah, weird, uh, <laughs> weird thing to admit uh, or, like, deny outright uh, without any prompt. And, uh, yeah, and like also, like, yeah, they didn't. I don't know. It's uh, it's interesting. And they're, a lot, they're probably I mean, doing everything they're accused of. The the did you see the thread of Kanye TikTok like people who are literally buying into all of this? Because you were saying like how many people are out there that are really going to flip because of Kanye and Buddy? The it is endless. It is literally endless. There's just, it's a thread that just keeps growing of people doing full on like three four minute. TikToks where they take Kanye's words and then back them up by like pulling d- different references that, uh, you know, are bullshit into what he actually means what he's saying. But like crazy shit. Cool. And it's a it's a platform that, uh, you know, on YouTube, the algorithm can show you videos it thinks you will like. TikTok puts it in front of you. Yeah. Forcefully, you can swipe away, but it puts it on the screen for you. I mean, yeah. I, it hasn't been as much of an issue up till now, but um, the, the YouTube rabbit hole from a few years ago is, it's like on fucking steroids on TikTok. It's just, you maybe haven't seen as many uh, racist uh Well, so that's, a, to, to, to us, it's like, we didn't know about Andrew Tate until like shit was yeah. already hitting the fan. There was a, they do, uh, you know, analysis of trends uh, every year, you know, the social media companies and, and marketing brands and stuff like that. They did another one where they're like asking, you know, right now, who is the biggest influencer for Generation Z? And like on the male side of things, it was literally Andrew fucking Tate. So it's like, yes, we are cool. a little disconnected from the real shit that's happening uh, outside guess, of our yeah. little Internet so. Today universe. I guess so. Yeah. but Pay uh, attention to what your kids are watching on that TikTok. I mean... Because everyone who watches this show, Can is, you? I'm but, sure there's a lot of people that have actual, like, teenage kids at this point. Oh, well, just turn off the electricity in your house. Yeah. It's the only way you're going to stop it. Uh-huh. Anyway, meanwhile, in other TikTok news, uh, the Bureau of Investigative Journalism recently published a report in partnership with Time on a topic that we've covered a bunch in the past. 
People getting paid extremely low wages to moderate online content and just getting severely traumatized from all the sick shit that they have to look at. Uh, and it turns out TikTok is no different from every other company who does this. And uh, there is some particularly fucked up examples in this article. Here's some of that. Lewis, a 28-year-old student from Columbia, works through the night moderating videos for TikTok. During the day, he tries to get some sleep, but sometimes the videos haunt his dreams. He remembers one video taken at a party with two people holding what initially looked like pieces of meat. When they turned around, it appeared they were holding skin and gristle which had been flayed off human faces. Quote, the worst thing was that the friends were playing games and started using the human faces as masks, he said. Lewis reeled off a list of the kind of content he sees on a regular basis. Murder, suicide, pedophilic, pornographic content, accidents, cannibalism. Well, that's fucking terrible. Uh, multiple other Colombian content moderators interviewed for the story had similarly horrific uh, tales. The article focuses on the content moderation team for TikTok's Latin American operation, which is based in Bogota and run through a third party company called Teleperformance, which is similar to how most other online platforms do content moderation. Yes. They're not our employees, so yeah, whatever. Yeah, They're contractors. Uh, also similar is the way that these people aren't provided adequate mental health services for what they have to deal with every day. Um, Teleperformance, which is a French company, has content moderation teams all over the world, and they reported nearly half a billion dollars in profits last year, but, you know, having a counselor on staff, it's... Yeah. Ah, mm, I don't know. It, literal irreparable harm. Yeah. Irreparable yeah, yeah. harm. This is like worse than going to war. Uh, At least there's downtime in war. Uh, also, in a lot of cases, worse than physical injury. Yeah. Because physical injury in a lot of cases can heal, and uh, this kind of shit can stay with you forever also, and torture you. At least if you're injured physically, most of the time, uh, other people can see that you're injured and they understand. Yes. Uh, my my scars are on the inside because I have to watch uh, fucking terrible content on yeah. TikTok. Like if you're showing up to like a fucking group therapy session for PTSD people and you're, you got like war veterans and like, mm -hmm. you know, spousal abuse victims, then you're like, I. I content I work moderate. for TikTok. Yeah, it, <laughs> honestly, there's, yeah, it's I'm sure, a it's huge stigma around it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they, they make a lot of money. Um, these people are paid dog shit. And on top of everything else, teleperformance apparently requires a lot of its employees to be visible on a webcam during their entire shifts mm. and also requires strict timekeeping from workers or else they get penalized, you know, even if they're maybe spending an extra minute or two in the bathroom crying over something they just saw. Get back to the desk. And uh, here's a little section on the quotas. The TikTok moderation system described by these moderators is built on exacting performance targets. If workers did not get through a huge number of videos or were late back from a break, they could lose out on a monthly bonus worth up to a quarter of their salary. It is easy to lose out on that much needed extra cash. Alvaro, a current TikTok moderator, has a target of 900 videos per day with about 15 seconds to view each video. He works from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. with two hours of break time and his base salary is 1.2 million pesos a month, only slightly higher than Colombia's minimum salary. All the moderators interviewed by the Bureau were based in the capital Bogota when they were working for TikTok, where rent and living expenses are above the national average. For Alvaro, hitting his productivity, timekeeping, and accuracy targets could be worth an extra 300,000 pesos, or 60 pounds. But he said he usually earned closer to his base salary of 1.2 million pesos. A single slip-up can be enough. He once received a disciplinary notice known internally as an action form for only managing to watch 700 videos in a shift, which was considered work avoidance. <laughs> Jesus. Once a worker has an action form, he said, they cannot receive a bonus that month. Only 700? So not only, only 700, you're not, doing the bare minimum? You're dealing with the mental toll of what you're moderating. And then the mental toll of not having your basic needs met because you fall behind on watching gruesome fucked up well, videos. It's also just like the sort of attention aspect of it. It's like, like if I'm in bed scrolling Reddit or like Instagram or something, like there's, it does something to your brain. Just like you can't, you know, you're not focusing on anything for more there, than like 10 seconds at a time. There's an effect. Uh, it's the same effect of when you're driving, even when you're obviously very attentive. Yeah. Your brain does not uh, like retain the, the action of driving from point A to B. Yeah. You kind of forget what it happens. Afterwards. So you're combining that, 
which maybe we don't fully understand in the context of modern technology. Yeah. And combining that where, uh, but everything they're looking at for the entire time is like fucked up shit. Uh, and they're, then they're ma- making barely enough to ma- meet their basic needs and also yeah. could not make that much this month because they've fallen behind. It's extremely uh, fucked up. Uh, yes, it's, it's really bad. Yeah, and uh, on top of all that, uh, these workers in Colombia are trying to unionize and teleperformance has, of course, been fighting them every step of the way for Aren't they two French? years. This company French? Uh, yeah, but they're not. Yeah, that is like they they know, they know from experience. They know from back home. Once you once you give them a taste of the union, oh, you'll never see the end of it. They're going to be taking cigarette breaks every twenty minutes. We're never going to get through all these videos. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they they're trying to unionize. Um, I don't know how that's going, but hopefully the workers are able to pull through. Um, but yeah, this story is just another like periodic reminder that behind every popular social platform, there is a army of people just getting full on PTSD for barely a living wage, uh, carrying the whole thing on their shoulders. <sighs> it's fucked up. It is. It's one of those things, specifically this, and we've covered it a lot. It is going to be one of those things that in like 20 or 30 years, they're going to be like, what the fuck were people thinking? Forcing other human beings to to witness atrocities multiple times a day all day forever well the good thing the good thing is that apparently these people are training an algorithm for well good TikTok. i guess yeah um i mean tiktok their algorithm is very advanced so apparently tiktok is hoping to get to a point where their algorithm is able to catch most of these things beforehand but it's, it's never going to be perfect of course it's not we see it every time we upload a video on here that uh, not algorithm, algorithms are not good at identifying objectionable content um so yeah there you go but good news uh twitter no more content moderation there you go it's a free and open platform the way god intended i love logging on to twitter.com and checking on all my all my favorite celebrities and local politicians and seeing what all the hot new snuff films are. Mm-hmm. It's its great. It's my favorite place to be. I love it. I want to spend more time on Twitter now that they've made these changes. Yes. <laughs> but let's, let's, let's finish things out on a lighter note, okay? Halloween is fast approaching. And if you're a parent, you may already be worried about your kids ending up with razor blades or rainbow fentanyl in their trick-or-treat bags, despite there not being any real evidence that that's something to actually be worried about. But uh-oh. Here comes something new to stress out over if there wasn't already enough. My kids love getting full-size candy bars on Halloween, but you need to be absolutely sure that you check whether or not those candy bars are running Doom. Oh my God. Does your child have Doom in his Halloween candy? And yeah, if that sounds ridiculous, oh, that doesn't make sense. Well, see for yourself. That is clearly a Milky Way bar in its wrapper, but upon removing it from the wrapper, yep, yep, there it is. That's Doom. That's the Doom guy himself. The never-ending quest to get the classic first-person shooter running on smaller and smaller hardware in increasingly bizarre places has now made its way into your kid's Halloween bag. As for who's responsible for this, well, it's it's Adafruit, the same electronics manufacturer that we recently talked about for providing detailed plans on how to create your own chest-cheating, vibrating butt plug. Unfortunately, they don't provide any instructions on how to make your own Doom playing candy bar, so uh, I guess this project is for pros only. Yeah. Look, it's fun. If you find Doom in your kid's candy, I think you'd be pretty impressed. I'd be impressed. I'd, I'd rather find a uh, veinless Snickers in my kid's candy. Damn yes. it! Tucker was right! Yeah. I knew we shouldn't have stopped at that house with the sign out front that said everybody is welcome in this town. Where's the dick veins? <laughs> this Snickers bar is smooth as hell! Take it back. You take it back. Uh, you can't have it. Then the... The dad secretly eats it, but it mm, sucks. My really fetish. Slow. <laughs> <laughs> I love smooth stickers, Snickers. Oh, God. Anyway, that's it for today. If you haven't seen it already, ladies and gentlemen, we got them. Jacob Wall, Jack Berkman, they have pled guilty. It's not much. It's not much, but, but it's a sign of things potential to come. Yes, there's some good stuff there. We run down a whole lot of other stuff on that episode, so please watch it if you haven't already. And also watch the most recent episode of Weekly Weird News. Oh, before before we go, uh, uh, having said the best social media platform, uh, go to twitter.com slash internet today TV. Uh, I tried to apply for uh, verification. verification. And now there's a, 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 thanks Elon Musk, there's a follower limit now. You have to hit a threshold. 
Oh. They never had that before. It was always just like, so I guess we need more followers. Yeah. We, What's the limit? Well, I don't know. They don't come right out and say nah. it. We're right. We're close to like 65,000. So if a couple, a couple yeah. grand of you. Make sure you follow. Yeah. Do that. Uh, you don't even have to log on to Twitter. Just, we just need to hit the threshold. Yeah. Maybe yeah. create a, a bot army. Do don't it. do that. <laughs> I don't want to cheat. I, I want it to do it realistic. But yes, having said that, it would be great if you could do that. So do that. There's a link in the description below. Now you can check out the videos. Uh, you got anti-woke superhero. You got Wallen Berkman. You got whatever you want. We'll be back with more news, and we'll see you soon. Bye.